Hi, I'm Nathan, a designer at Unity, and I'm going to walk you through how cloud content delivery works and how you can get started deploying your live game content updates in no time. In this presentation, we're going to cover signing up for the service, downloading the command line interface, and finding your API key, and then the steps required to set up the service to host your content. To start using cloud content delivery, you can sign up from the unity3d.com website or from the developer services dashboards. You'll need to create or use a Unity login, and you'll need to provide a credit card. We've designed cloud content delivery so that you can evaluate it without having to pay any money. As long as you use less than 50 gigabytes a month of bandwidth, there's no charge. Once you're done signing up, you'll see a link to continue using cloud content delivery. Now let's look at how you download the command line interface and where you go to find your API key. Once you navigate to the project you want to use cloud content delivery with, you'll see there's side navigation that allows you to go to the download CLI page where you'll find links to download the CLI for the three major desktop platforms and also a page that holds your API key. The next thing you'll do to get started using the service is create a bucket to host your content. You can make as many buckets as you like, and buckets are very simple to create. Give them a name and optionally a description, and you'll see them appear in the bucket list. This one's empty because I haven't uploaded any content yet. Let's look at how to do that. Click the bucket you just made to see its details. You can see that this bucket is currently empty because we haven't uploaded any content yet, so we're presented with some instructions that teach us how to do so. For the purposes of this walkthrough, we're going to be showing integration with the Addressables Asset Package in Unity. This package is available in the Package Manager in Unity. It's not required to use Cloud Content Delivery, but it does have some nice features if you're going to be managing remote and local content in your Unity game. The first thing to do is to go to the Badges tab and copy the URL for this latest badge. Badges are markers that you can direct your runtime application to to find the release that you want them to load. For Addressables, we're going to take that latest URL and we're going to create a new profile and then paste this URL into the remote load path. Then we're going to rebuild our player and our content. Once you've done that, we're ready to start uploading content using the CLI. Going back to the latest tab and to the instructions, we're going to choose the first section, how to upload content using the command line interface. Scrolling down, you'll see there's some handy commands that you can use to upload the content you just built. Copying these commands one at a time into the CLI will allow you to first log in then set the current bucket you want to upload to to the one we just created, and then finally sync the folder where you built your content to the bucket. Once this is done, you can refresh this bucket page and you'll see that it's in an unreleased changes state. While I've successfully uploaded content to this bucket, until it's a release it won't be loaded by my runtime application. Let's look at how to make your first release. You can make a release in the web interface by clicking the Create Release button when there's unreleased changes. You can also run it as a command from the CLI. Creating a release involves supplying some optional release notes to help you understand what was in the release later, and applying badges to the release. The latest badge is a badge that is automatically managed by the service. It will always be applied to the most re recent release in your bucket. You can make your own custom badges and move them manually in this step, and also later on. Once you confirm everything's as it should be, you can create your release. Now, at this moment, because we used the latest badge URL in our runtime application with the addressable asset profile, you should be able to launch your application and it will find this content from the service. Congratulations, you just made your first release and you're loading content from the service. Badges can be very useful in scenarios where you want dynamic control over what releases your builds use. For example, my QA team might have builds configured to use whatever release is badged with latest, but my customers might be only using whatever release is badged with production. This would give me the ability to create a release and have my QA team test it, and then once it's ready, I can move the production badge to that release. In this example, my production badge was on release 22, and by moving it to release 23, I've now released release 23 to all of my users. That wraps up this overview of the Cloud Content Delivery Service. We hope you'll give it a try today. Remember that it's no charge as long as you use less than 50 gigabytes of bandwidth a month. Thanks so much for watching.